Hi, Mike Callahan again here. I uh, want to welcome everybody back to the uh, Facebook user group. Uh, final installment, uh, third of third for the piece rate and service autopilot implementation. I'm going to run through real quick how to use service autopilot and some Google Forms to basically streamline your piece rate pay system and get the numbers you need to pay your employees. The first thing you need to do is go to your dispatch board, the closeout day screen here. Select the date range, and you're going to select your resource, which I collect. I sorted by Mo Crew number one. You're going to hit apply, and the numbers you're going to be looking for here are the budgeted hours and your actual hours, just to keep all our information uh, confidential and not show basically all our accounts here for the whole week with the pricing. Um, I did not show the rest of the screen, but I'm going to hop down here to the bottom of the dispatch board here, so you can kind of see the bottom of our last customer here. Their budgeted time 0.52, actual time. 0.1 man hours. So the service autopilot is going to sum up the actual man hours here. This is a two man crew, so there's a little bit of a disconnect. You're going to have to multiply this 30.73 by two, which is going to give you a 61 and a half approximately man hours for the whole entire week or the three days we've selected here, and the total budget hours in 94.78. So obviously, if the crew is budget for 94.78 hours and we did it uh, just under 62 hours, they're um, the guys beat the the budgeted hours there um, by quite a bit of time. So uh, it's a two man crew. So if there's a delta of let's say thirty hours and divided by that divided by two, each crew member got paid an extra fifteen hours that week or that pay period that they actually weren't on the job but beat the budgeted time. Obviously, they got to meet the quality constraints and get the job done right. Uh, but this is a pretty similar situation that we would see given this time. Um, motivates the employees and aligns our goals with them to make sure they're making money and the company's making money. Next thing we're going to look at is an example pay stub that we use in a Google Doc or an Excel sheet to summarize the actual budget hours and, and actual hours worked. This seems to help the employees understand exactly what happened and what they got paid for in a summary report, and we staple this right to their paycheck stub. Uh, this So it's this week pay week here. They started at 7 a.m. These are the hours they ended in. These are the total hours for each day. Uh, we subtract out the five hours, an hour a day each day for lunch. So they worked 56.17 hours minus five hours for lunch, which gave us a total delta of 51.17 hours actually on the job. They were budgeted for 61.29 hours. So the crews basically were about, or this gentleman was 10 hours under budget. Uh, another thing you may notice is over here, a uh, quick takeaway, maybe a pro tip that may help you out. We give the guys a dollar an hour bonus that's paid at the end of the year. It's a performance bonus based on them finishing the year and meeting certain quality standards. There's a few other things that go into it, but the main takeaway would be in order to get this bonus, they have to finish the season and you know work to a minimum quality standard. So based on 56 hours, we gave this gentleman $56.17 dollars. Uh, with a dollar an hour bonus. And this is a cumulative bonus. So they can see the money adding up. So traditionally, most of our crews are between $15 and $1,700 a season. And when we used to have a lot of employee turnover towards the end of the year, by doing this, we pretty much ensured our employee retention because not many employees would leave or quit just because they were burned out when they had eleven or $1,200 sitting in the bank in September. So if they got through the third or fourth week in November, they would get their bonus. But if they quit before then, the performance bonus was contingent on them finishing the season. So hopefully that may help with some ideas how to do that. Uh, we also track the mowing hours on the mow crews and the maintenance hours on the maintenance crews. So you keep your records uh, very consistent. Everybody wins in your company. Quick summary of what we did in 2015. We paid out over a little over $7,000 in extra pay for our field staff that they weren't actually performing the work. So they were about $7,000 in pay under budget. And each employee averaged around $700 in pay that they were not on the job. So this is vastly to help us retain our employees year after year. And ever since we've implemented the piece rate pay system, our, our, our ret employee retention has been up and our profits as well have been up every year consistently since we've started doing this system. So the, the system itself definitely works. If you have any questions or suggestions for another help want or help video, let me know, and I'd be happy to uh, make that out. Otherwise, you guys have a great weekend. I'm going to be posting a video either Monday or Tuesday next week just to help explain how to incorporate the drive time 
in your budgeted hours. Uh, there may have been a di- bit of a disconnect on making sure that your drive time is included in your actual job pricing and costing as well.